my comment. Good morning, folks. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We'll just wait for a few more people to come on in. I hope you're all sitting comfortably with a cup of tea and some toast or cereal. Good morning, everyone who's just joining us. And we've got a few more people coming in. And OK, we'll go for it. Well, hello, everyone, and good morning. And welcome to another of our virtual tours. This is a slightly different virtual tour from the ones that we've been running for from the last few months um, across the world and in various different locations with lots of different wildlife and different tour leaders. Got a green woodpecker calling above me, if you can hear that. Um, and today we're actually running this from the Nature Trek headquarters uh, here in Hampshire. And for those of you who don't know me, my name's Sarah Frost, I'm Nature Trek's marketing manager, and I'm joining our in house moth expert, Dave Shute, for our virtual moth trap this morning. So I'll just switch the camera around so that we can see Dave. Here we are, Dave. And so, Dave, we set up this moth trap last night in the meadow, didn't we? Yeah. Which is what's in front of you now. The weather was mild but cloudy. Cloudy, which is good. Uh, good morning, everyone, by the way. Um, yes, it, it was a, a good warmish night and it was cloudy, which is always good. But there were some heavy showers as well. Um, now, that can obviously stop moths from flying. But uh, on the whole, if they're already around and they're in the trap, it's not going to affect them. They're, they're nice and comfy in there, sitting on their egg boxes. So um, all in all, it should be there should be quite a few things in there. Um, you know, I saw quite a few flying around the trap when I came in. So uh, there should be a bit. They might be a bit lively. That's it. <laughs> so we may lose a few as soon as we open the trap. So uh, apologies for that. Well, that's all right. They can go into uh, into the trees that we have in the orchard here, and uh, there's lots of lovely little hiding spots for them. They particularly like this wall along here and we hope that the weather holds out don't we Dave we've got we've got raincoats and things at the ready uh, should it start pouring down so fingers crossed and um and let's see okay. let's see how we get on Next yeah okay so and we ran the trap last night um in a robinson trap which is what you can see before me but what i've taken away is the bulb that sits on top uh, it's a, a very powerful 125 watt uh, mercury vapor bulb, which um, emits a very strong light, um, and the moths are attracted to light, as we all know. Uh, they still haven't actually decided what makes them attracted to light. There's theories about navigation through the stars and the moon, uh, and that certainly would bear true in the fact that they, on cloudy nights, they're more likely to be attracted to the lamp. Uh, but it doesn't entirely explain, and uh, no one's really sure why they um, are attracted to it, because they must realise when they get close, it's not the moon, uh, but they still fly round and round and then end up, uh, there's a funnel at top, and they, they go down in the funnel where we've got a lot of egg cartons, um, and then they just go inside the little cups and roost up there, and they'd be happy there all day now um if we weren't taking them out <laughs> um, but we can find nice safe places for them if uh, when we finished okay so i'll open the trap oh there we go an and escapee yeah. yeah and folks if you do have questions do just pop them to us in the chat or the q a section we'll be keeping an eye on that throughout the moth trap so feel so, free i won't be doing this all the time but as there's some on the actual piece of um, cloth that I've got here. Um, here we've got a rosy footman, a nice bright one to start. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Lovely. Okay, so that's um, one of a group of footman moths. Um, let's see what else. So on the top of the, can you see that one? Uh, on the top of the thing there, that one's called a coronet. Very nice. It's a very well marked one. The coronet is supposed to be the two white spots near the bottom of the wing, um, which are supposed to look a little bit like a crown, but you need a bit of imagination for that. Uh, they're all flying up and frayed, some are. Okay. Now, apart from the jeopardy of a wasp on this one, uh, 
we have whew, uh, under here a, a peppered moth. Oh, is it gone? No, it hasn't gone. Oh, oh lovely. Um, which is a nice one. And down in there, that rather nice sort of yellowish brown one mm. is a dusky sallow. Now, all these moths have a particular season and that one's just coming to its season now. So late summer is its, is its principal flying time. The pepper moth's been out for a while. Um, so that's been on the and wing. And is this another rosy footman that we have? Uh, yes, a rosy yeah, footman one. down in there. And Lovely vibrant we've colours. also got a spectacle here. Um, which oh goodness, yeah. I don't know if you can get that on the you camera. Can, just about if I just try and it has what appears to be a pair of goggles yeah. on its front head, but it's not really, it's just tufts of hair, it's not its eyes. Um, but it just looks like that, which is where it gets its name from. And um, um, the peppered moth, I mean, people might know about this. I yes. remember learning about this at, at school yes, because of favorite famous sort of biological it city because um in industrialized britain in the 19th century as everywhere got covered in soot um there is a, a melanistic form of the pepper moth which is black um and because of that the um, the black form survived um more readily than the, this white form the checkered form so <clears throat> it's believed that that was you know um beneficial to that form um and now, of course, that we've got cleaner air, this one is supposed to be predominant again. Yeah, extraordinary uh, camouflage, really, against the uh, tree bark. It's a sort of case it's, of natural selection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in action. Uh, also in there, down there, there's a ribboned wave, which is the one that's lying flat with the lines across it. Oh, yeah, lovely. And also a common footman. Now, the rosy footman is quite pretty and reddish, but most of the footmen are grey. Um, which is, um, they were named after the um, hotel porters in the Victorian age who had grey tunics. <laughs> so most of them are grey like that. Uh, another coronet there. Now I want to show you something on the other side because this is, a, <coughs> looks like a, a footman on steroids um, and it is a footman, um, but it's, it's a recent colonist to the UK. It used to be very rare. This one on the on here, um, it's actually called a four spotted footman, and of course you're going to say, well, there's no spots on it, and that's because that's a male, and only the females have got four spots. They're rather beautiful the females, they're yellow with four blue spots, um, but they're not often attracted to light, whereas the males are. But you can see it's quite a a decent size, and until three or four years ago, it would have been I'd have been jumping up and down to catch this. Um, but it's now becoming sort of annual. And the little one here is one of a number of uh, pale straw colored things called wainscots. And there are quite a few species. Um, some of them you have to actually um, move the wings to see what they are, because uh, it's the underwing that's critical. But on this one, I can tell it is a common wainscot. Wow. And uh, we will send you, uh, you all a list, folks, of the list of these moths, because uh, I can't quite keep up. No, there's <laughs> a marble miner there. It's not a very, it's a rather tatty one. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, sorry, there. I can't quite focus on that, folks, but okay. that's, that's that one there. And in that side, on the, down in there, there's a red twin spot carpet. Again, you might have trouble getting that one. It's the one that's tucked in. Oh, that is lovely. It's yeah, slightly dark red. Yeah. If you can see that. Yeah. Very okay. nice. So I'll put that there. And here goes another one. Oops, that. <laughs> hey, and we have already. Boom. Oh, look at that. Look at the size of that. <laughs> wow. And that is a privet hawk moth. It's our largest native hawk moth. Uh, as you can see, it's huge. Um, and it's common, um, quite likely to be in, if you've got a decent sized back garden, it's quite likely to be in the gardens. Um, but of course you never see it because it's a night flyer. 
Um, and some tar, I don't know how docile this is. It doesn't want to, does it? It has a, a way of um, like a warning mm. system where it will flash its wings open and reveal a sort of pink striped uh, underwing and body, which is supposed to startle a predator. Um, we might be able to do that later when it settles down. On the end here, a strange looking thing with its wings tightly shut, which it always sits like, um, is an early thorn. So um, you might say, well, it's not early. Uh, it, it's because it has two generations. Um, it has a very early one, and now it's on its second generation. But the thorns always sit either with their wings tightly closed or slightly apart. So that's an early thorn, rather nice. Um, in there, you don't even see that little tiny one. Mm -hmm. um, that yellow one there is a, a micro, which doesn't have an English name, but it's quite a this pretty one. one. Um, it's called Evergestis limbata. Uh, again, it used to be a migrant only, and it seems to have colonized probably because of global warming, um, but it's rather a pretty one. Um, but hasn't yet been given an English name. Rosy footmen are abundant. One flew Lovely. away as we were talking. Yeah. And there are two more. Um, and the one sitting there um, is called a mother of pearl. It has a little, um, a slight sheen on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I suspect in this light you can't see that. But, uh, and, uh, oh. and this one that's trying to escape uh, is a very worn snout. <laughs> it's just called a snout. Snout, um, great name. It's usually much browner than that. It's a worn, very worn specimen. Um, but it has a has palp sticking out of its head, which looked like a snout. So you're saying a worn specimen. So how long will this have been out and about? That will have been flying for maybe a week to 10 days, probably. That's about the average for an adult moth. I mean, their main purpose is to uh, uh, mate and 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 breed um, but there are one or two the bigger hawk moths probably last a month or so and there are one or two moths that will overwinter because they slow themselves down and they can hibernate like butterflies so wow. there are some butterflies that can do that as well as we know uh, there's a small fan footed wave there there's a tiny flat one there can just see it and that's quite, quite camouflage. Well camouflage yeah, yeah. And uh, down on this side, it's a bit uh, wet. This box got rather wet. So you can see the underside of this uh, pivot moth, though. To... Is it showing now? And not the uh, not, not the colour of its wings, but just to see just the size of its body is yeah. is incredible. I mean, if you're uh, a bird, that's a decent meal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. If uh, would uh, so, what would predate them? Would night jars oh, have them? There we go. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. Right we can there. see it. Yeah. You can see the purple, the pink on the wing. Yeah. Yes, birds would take them in the in the night time, yeah. uh, and bats, probably larger bats, would probably take them. And getting back um, to the safety of his egg box. <laughs> there we go. He's all right. So, um, what I should say at this point is that there are um, something like um, two and a half thousand species just in the UK of moths um, but most people that do moth trapping concentrate on the larger ones which are the macro moths they're called macro moths uh, and there are about 850 to 900 of those and then there is another 1500 or more of what they call micro moths which are the tiny tiny ones which we shan't be looking at today often they need very very uh, close examination to identify them um, but there are exceptions um, because there are some in a family of micros which are exceptionally large and uh, the mother of pearl in fact is a micro um, but it's in a family of micros that are tiny but he's very large so it doesn't fit neatly uh, and it's a purely sort of uh, scientific division it's not a real um, there's no difference really between them. So with all those species that you just said, it must be quite overwhelming for someone who's wanting to get into moth trapping or someone who's interested in learning about it. What would you, what advice would you give to someone who's wanting yes. to just get, start off oh. with it? You know, start with you the can, sort of most popular 10 families or, or something? Yeah, you can get, um, well, first of all, you, you can often find your local natural history society or wildlife trust might run some, some traps, you know, that the public can attend. So that's a way of getting to know um, the different species. You have an expert telling you. 
Um, but if you want to do it yourself and it's great fun, if you can buy very cheap um, fold up ones that traps that you can put in your garden um, and the smaller ones will only bring in a small number. So you're not overwhelmed with, you know, hundreds of moths in the morning. You might maybe have a dozen or 20. Um, so then you can you know, spend your time looking at the individual. Just start slowly. In uh, a great activity. Most people, when they start, they ignore the dull brown ones, which there'll be plenty of. Uh, and concentrate on the more colourful or the larger ones. Um, and then gradually, as you get used to those, you start branching out into the more complicated ones. Yeah. And a great activity to do with the grandchildren as well, uh, old children. Yeah, kids love it, especially yeah. the hawk moths. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> get young budding naturalists into it. It's a great way to do it in your own back garden or backyard. Yeah, and it's <coughs> it's a nice sedentary hobby. You don't have to walk far <laughs> or drive miles. And you can still find amazing things in your back garden. Um, here we've got we've a whole got tray footmen. full of yeah. footmen, all common by the looks of things, um, and a rosy again. And we've got another dusky sallow in the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, and on the edge. Is that one easy? Yeah, yeah, we've got that. <coughs> and then this tiny one here is actually a macro. <coughs> it's a, a least carpet. The least carpet. It's a bit worn again. So we're looking at this one here. And this this, this little one here is amazing. It's called a ruby tiger. Oh wow. Well you can see why. It's one of the smallest of the tiger moths. Um, most of them are much bigger than that. Um, but it, it's called ruby because underneath it's got a red body. Mm. Well, um, I just saw its red, a sort of red face almost on it. Um, but uh, I don't there think are we bits can... of red on yeah. it elsewhere. Let's see it with the light. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, this one here, That's rather lovely. attractive, very. Um, is called a, a broad bordered yellow underwing. So uh, again, if it if it flashes its wings, there is a a very thick black border to it and then a bright orange mark inside um, but they don't tend to react like those if i try to do that it'll fly probably right uh, it, it probably won't just sit me and let me touch it like that but it's a rather attractive uh, color and i'm just going to see if we've got any Question, questions yeah. while we load the next egg box so i'm just going to sit sit you here and Dave, just to give people a uh, context of where our moth trap has actually been set up for the last uh, overnight, it's been out in a, our 12 acre meadow, um, with, which is, um, uh, well, we've got barn owls that live there. It's, um, it's quite it's, a, um, yeah, in the process been, of rewilding it, aren't we? Are rewilding. The pond has been um, enlarged um, and we've now got frogs and newts and several, I think at least five species of dragonfly have colonized it. Um, we have a, a little tin next to the, to the pond and that's had um, water shrew under it and I think probably snakes, it certainly has in the past, grass snakes. Um, and uh, yeah, the meadow itself, we, we've created some, a few chalk banks in the meadow. Um, it's um, when we um, came to, to this site, it had heavily been, um, that nutrients been added, they'd have a lot of farm animals in it. Um, and it was in a poor state from a natural point of view. Um, but we're gradually trying to restore it. And in places we've dug over the ground and made little chalk banks. And we're hoping that that will improve the flora. And then, in, in, you know, in turn produce butterflies. Mm. Uh, we've already got a few butterflies there, but there's a potential for a lot more as it's chalk. And we're getting a, a decent number of moths so far. Is yes. this what you'd expect for the area that we have? Yeah, yes, uh, it's going to be either grassland species or wood. We've got a nice mixed woodland right next to it. You can just start you can to see, see the, the edge of our woodlands. Right yeah, meadows full of uh, various uh, deciduous trees. Um, so it's quite a nice position. We're, we're between a meadow and a, and a wood, so you can pull stuff in from both sides. Um, and another thing to say is that not all moths are night flying. There are probably a good number that fly during the daytime. Um, if you walk through a grassy meadow at this time of year, you might notice little red moths flying about, which are cinnabars or 
burnet moths um, and a number of other species that, that fly in the day. And they can be just as colorful the day flies as the, as the uh, butterflies. But for the nocturnal moths, uh, the main principle is that they're darker for um, camouflage. So in the daytime, when all the birds are about, um, <clears throat> their main aim is to be inconspicuous. And um, we've got a question here from Pamela Gardner. Yes. And uh, she says, I think I had a rosy footman on my raspberries yesterday here in Gillingham. Do they like raspberries or was I just lucky? Um, I don't think they would be using the raspberry. No, it's just probably, they might have actually been trying to obtain some sort of fluid from them. Um, you know, they will, um, most butterflies and moths need a certain amount of liquid intake. So there might have been some juice there that it was trying to get. Um, but yeah, otherwise just lucky. Um, Great, and she's also asking, um, can you recommend a good book to ID moths and butterflies, please? Yes, and I've left it in the room in there. Um, shall I go and get that just briefly? Or? Oh, yes, yes, you can do. So we've got a couple of folks just saying that um, they can't hear very well. Um, so thank you to those who are saying that you can all hear fine, um, because I was slightly apprehensive. We might not be able to, to hear. It's a, it's a tad tricky trying to balance being camera woman as long with the uh, doing the, uh, the sound and things, but I think it may be a problem at other folks' end, so I'll have to send them a message. So this is the, the book, standard book that everyone uses. There is a smaller edition uh, for beginners, which has got the same number of species in, but it's, um, it's a much thinner uh, ring-bound volume and it has less text. So it, all the, photo, all the uh, drawings are in there, but not the, the amount of text. Um, so either is brilliant. Um, it's, it's by uh, Paul Waring and Martin Townsend, um, and it's illustrated by the uh, tremendous artist uh, Richard Lewington. So if I open it to the page with the privets, and I don't port this. So, oops. so they're, they're all drawn to life size. So that helps a great deal because you can actually match the size of your specimen to the, the book. And here's your privet hawk there. Lovely. And uh, yeah, so that's Great. the book to get. Well, let's see what else we've caught. Okay. Well, <laughs> we've got another Oh, one. wow. We've got another privet hawk moth. Oh, something's flown away. And what else have we got? More rosy footmen. Um, this flat one here, the large one, is a willow beauty. Um, very just common. Point, just point that to the camera just so Sorry. people can see. Yeah. A very common moth. Um, usually get that in the trap at this time of year. Uh, another mother of pearls, slightly mother sheenier pearl. one there. And this is a willow beauty. Willow beauty. Willow this beauty, one this one. There. And this uh, footman here, which is much much thinner you can see how oh, it's it like really tightly this round one. that's a scarce footman although it's not particularly scarce it's just perhaps scarcer than the common footman um there is uh, another spectacle there that we had earlier and down in there is a burnished brass oh they're one of but my favorites unfortunately it's not in the best position it's to not see is it, it? But they've got a wonderful sheen, brassy, brassy sort of, uh, greeny sheen on them. And the sun helps. Yes. <laughs> when we've got it. Um, whoa, there's all sorts here. Um, here's another ruby oh, tiger. Oh, look at that, but you can really body. see, yeah. Can you get that? I can, yeah, that's fantastic. Red legs as well. Oh, oh wow. Oh, no, it's oh. all right. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh right. Well, he's um, oh, he's going into there. He'll be fine. And what else have we got? Um, there's one here, not a very exciting looking one. That's um, a lesser broad bordered yellow underwing. Probably got the biggest name yeah. in the book. <laughs> um, so we had the broad border just we now. We did, yeah. Got, right, quite large, sort of a limey green color. Mm -hmm. This is a much darker thing, but again, it would have a bright yellow underwing if I, no, it doesn't want to move. Fair enough. Sometimes they move. Um, another mother of pearl there. There is um, 
right up in there. I don't know if you'll be able to get that. There's a ribbon wave and also a thing called a common rustic with the white marks on the... Yeah, so the common rustic is that? the one on the right and, and the ribbon, ribbon wave, wave is on the left. Is that easy enough to see? Uh, well, just about. It's um, slightly annoying. The camera won't let me focus mm. on it uh, too closely. And the one on the top here? Oh, yeah, very that nice. One, that's a nut tree tussock. It's quite a hairy moth, particularly around the head. And the hairs on the head are probably just a, a thing to keep them warm in, because they do fly early in the spring, that one. And it's again, second brood. Um, I think that's pretty much everything on that one. But we, there are a couple of micros there. So we have a, a question from Craig Swick, who's asking why are the moths clinging to the egg carton rather than just flying off? And is the egg carton a good way to keep them still yes. while you're identifying them? It is. Um, some are flying off, but yes, uh, the, the rough surface of the egg box gives them something to cling on to. Um, yeah, that, that's the idea of it. But also because it's daylight, they don't normally want to be flying off. Um, they would be roosting somewhere for the day on a piece of twig or something. So they're quite happy sitting there generally. But if it's a warm morning um, and a very bright morning, they will not like that. So they'll probably fly off to find somewhere cool and shady to sit. But yes, it's the roughness of the texture that's the key for them being happy sitting there. Okay, try another one. Right, on the top, we oh, have wow. the perfect uh, bird dropping mimic. Uh, we're going to have to watch where we're treading here. Yeah. Um, it's called a Chinese character. Um, and the reason is that on the wing, you probably can't see in the camera, but there's a little Not sort of, uh, a little sort of squiggle on the middle of the wing, which is supposed to represent something in the Chinese alphabet, you know, a, a letter in the Chinese mm. alphabet. But it's absolutely perfect bird drop mimic, bird dropping mimic. It really is. And it will, it's so confident that it will sit anywhere because it's confident that birds will think, well, I don't want to eat that. Mm. Um, so it doesn't even try to obscure itself um, with patterns or anything like that. Amazing. Um, it is an absolutely it's incredible absolutely thing. Stunning. One of my favorites. I love them. I think we might have something exciting underneath. Uh, well, first of all, is that. Oh. Um, uh, which is called a grey or dark dagger. And the reason it's called grey or dark is because there are two species and they can't be separated as adults. But the caterpillars are markedly different. So if you found a caterpillar and managed to ID it, you could say whether it was grey or dark. But when it gets to adult, they're identical. Wow. So I don't know whether that's some sort of conversion evolution. Oh, yes. There we go. There we go. Yet another hawk moth. Yes. I uh, didn't see that. Um, so this is a poplar hawk moth. Um, another interesting one. It holds its wings in a very strange format, sort of away from the body. I don't know if you can see yeah. that. Yeah, no, we can really see it very um, clearly. It's got its tail slightly tipped up and it's got its hind wings moved forward in front of its forewings at the top here. So, and all that is to create the impression of a dead leaf. So it's, it's moving, it's giving its outline a very, uh, um, oh, privets going on, yeah, it's on its got, right. Got a couple of privets on the move here. Um, so yeah, it's to break up its outline and make it look like a dead leaf. And it's pretty good at that. Yeah. Again, if it's, if it's alarmed, it can open its wings and there's a brown, sort of quite a chestnut spot that it will flash to try and warn off predators. Amazing. Um, great that we've had two hawk moths. Not always, this time of year is starting to get towards the end of the hawk moth season. They're generally out in May and June, but May was so poor this year that I think quite a few have come out late and therefore still on the wing. Sorry, do you want to do something before? I... No, you're fine. Carry on. Yeah, I'm multitasking. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, not easy. <laughs> okay, so next box. 
um, and a new species. Rather pretty one on the top, which oh, yeah. is a scalloped oak. Um, the wood, the just... wood behind it is um, is full of oak, so it's a typical species we might get. Mm -hmm. Scalloped oak. It's got those two black spots and the sort of bands across the wing. Uh, there's another spectacle showing his yeah. goggles. His little snazzy goggles. Whatever which way up you want that. That's, uh, no, that's right. that's all right. The light isn't. Um, um, and there are two is. things in here. Oh, one's gone. Um, where this one here, it's not very exciting to look at. And it, it caused Victorians no end of problems identifying it. <laughs> so um, it, again, these days, they, the people who record moss don't separate the two. There's two very similar species. And that's this but one. The, that one. One, yeah. one of the species is called the uncertain, which is why obviously the Victorians were struggling. The other one's called a rustic, but they now aggregate them together. So most moth recorders, when you send records in, they will want you to just combine them and say it's it's a rustic stroke uncertain aggregate because um, without dissecting them you shouldn't really no. ID them. Uh, oh, oh some nice ones on this side now. So here we've got a rather nice buff ermine. Oh yeah, that? yes, yes. So that's rather pretty. Then quite hairy. And then in here we've got black arches. I don't know if you can, just, if I can move him just a bit. Yeah, just, oh, and look at... You know, no, I can't. Oh, I don't He's got very strong feathered antennae. Yes. Um, and that will make it probably a male um, because they use the feathered antennae to pick up the scent of the pheromones from, <laughs> <laughs> from females. So, um, yeah, they're very sensitive and, and they can pick up the scent and direct them into the... Uh, We've got the privets going just, mad here. Yeah, so we can just uh, see this behaviour that we, we have here. This one's totally still, and that one, oh, he's off. He's gone. He's off and gone. Well, I think he's, uh, oh, he's gone for gone to a nice safe spot, I think, under, uh, so under here. But uh, just to be, to be clear, folks, when you run them off trap, you really um, yes. need to be responsible with the way that you... Um, handle the moths afterwards and make sure you pop them onto a, a tree or in a nice secluded spot. We're going to be popping these moths into uh, deep into the bushes over there. And this is because obviously they're out during the day when they wouldn't normally be, they'd normally be tucked under uh, leaves and things and they're just exposed uh, to, to birds. They're easy meals. So we're going to make sure that all of these get tucked away again. Yeah, the only other thing you can do if you're doing it in the garden is to cover it during the day and then release them at night. Um, so that's another option. Um, in that box as well is another ruby tiger. Is that? Do you want me to? Yeah, get just move there? that. Move that there. Great, thank you. Watch where you're treading. Yeah, we've got to be very careful that we don't um, don't step on any. But we're being very cautious. You're okay there. Yeah, we're good. So there's a, a ruby tiger again, showing quite a bit of red on it down in there yeah and anything else that rather dull looking one there is called a clay but it's a bit worn so i won't dwell on that one too long i think that's all in there another spectacle we saw that didn't we i think yeah okay next one yeah something got away oh Everything's fine. Yeah, all going there. Okay, so there's another burnished brass showing a bit oh, better. Oh, that's lovely. It's, it's not the brightest one I've seen, but it's, you can see the uh, yeah. sort of green brassy sheen. Yeah, right? you can. And then we've got a coronet, which we had already. And we've got that micro moth, which was Evergestis limbata, the yellow the one. Micro there. And a coronet there, which we've had before. And a common rustic, which we had before. That down in there is actually a caddis fly. Yeah. So a lot of people, when they're starting out, they 
they think is what sort of moth is that but it's actually a caddis fly because it's got such long antennae mm. no moths have got antennae like that it's projecting out the front so um and on the other side here we've got another of the yellow underwings this is the commonest one it's the large yellow underwing this one down in here um and that again has a black border with a bright yellow orange underwing and this is the one that often ends up in people's houses mm. they see a big moth flying around inside and they've got their windows open at night yeah and it's nearly always that one the large yellow underwing I'm going to have to be very careful because things have dropped on the floor right by my feet. I'm just going to move. Yeah, them. we'll just <laughs> nudge them out of the way so gently. Trail. Yeah. They'll be happy if they go under and the one's landed on your boot now. Just. Oh, yeah. Fly me. Very difficult. They'll be happy enough if they crawl underneath this furniture out here. They'll be safe under there. Um, Whoa, okay. Um, this one on the end here, you can get that. Mm -hmm. With a yellowish one is a barred straw. You can see why. The one in the middle is the mother of pearl again. Yeah, that's the, quite a nice one, that one. It's really lovely. And the one on the right hand side is called Dunbar, D U N B A R. It's got a sort of uh, a, a very distinctive um, band across the middle with two black spots in it. There's another caddis fly, and they're showing again how long the antennae yeah, are on caddis flies. Yeah, very. Uh, no mistaking them really for a moth. More footmen everywhere. Um, this is quite a pretty little micro moth. Oh, that's nice. Um, it, I, as far as I know, it doesn't have an English name. Um, but it's a, it's an oak specialist, so. And you've said that uh, you know Victorians have had troubles naming naming them, and a lot of the names, uh, you know, like the, the footmen do herald back to Victorian days. So yeah. it suggests the Victorians really had a, a great interest in moths. They did, but of course they didn't have the powerful lamps that we have. Um, obviously, they had candles and things and that's probably where the saying moth to the flame comes from um, but in most cases they were they raised them from lava so they, they found the caterpillars in the field um, and then they raised them at home to find out what what they got so right. you will find that quite a lot of them are named after the caterpillars because they found the caterpillar and thought well, there's a there's a puss moth <clears throat> and that's because the caterpillar is furry and then it wags its tail in defense. <laughs> so, you know, they would have named it from that rather than the adult moth. There's also a lobster moth, which looks nothing like a lobster as an adult, but the caterpillar does. Right. So they didn't have the aids we've got to. Uh, here's a spectacle really showing its spectacles very well. Don't think you can get that. Oh, it is there. You can just see, folks, those two yeah. little goggles it's got at the front there. And that's its spectacles. Mm. Other than that, Dusky Salar again, which we had earlier. Uh, there seem to be a few of those about. And the wainscot again, common mm -hmm. wainscot. And on the other side. Oops, I'm tucking one in there. No, there's another clay. It's not a very nice one. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> As the year goes on, the species um, variety tends to drop off. So this is probably the last time with a good variety. As we move into August and September, um, the variety goes down a bit <clears throat> and new species come out on the wing. There's another Dunbar and another Ruby Tiger. Um, and an uncertain, oh, another Chinese character. Oh, lovely. Another one doing Yeah, this, uh... bird dropping. Talking of puss moths, Dave, uh, Susan yeah. Barclay says that uh, she was guarding recently and felt something on her back, which turned out to be a puss moth caterpillar. Oh. Is this rare? And when will it turn into a moth? Um, well, I've never seen a caterpillar. Um, so that's a good plus for starters. Um, I've seen the adult moth. Um, 
it probably, I mean, it'll find somewhere to pupate um, and, and they'll, they'll pupate on posts or uh, not, not underground. They generally find somewhere like a, a branch or something like that. And then they weave themselves a, a cocoon uh, and then they stay in that cocoon for a few weeks and then they'll come out. So, I mean, people do rear um, things they find, larvae, um, in, a, in a sort of a clear perspex box with some earth in and a few twigs stuck in. You could try that if you've still got it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't rear myself, so uh, I don't know what success rate is of doing that. Um, so, but yeah, um, it would be it'd be about a month between it, yeah, pupating and flying. Yeah, but good find, Susan. That sounds yeah, great. Right. Uh, there's another spectacle. There seem to be a few of those about. Yeah. Uh, another large yellow underwing down in there. Um, if I pop that. Oh, yeah. I wonder, I'm just going to go and check that this is on. So I just wonder yes. if I pop that there. You can keep showing that to camera just for one second. Yeah, I'll see if it's. Just clearing things out on my footpath. <laughs> yes, do you have to be, do you have to be careful? All right. There, that one's got a bit of water in it as well. And the rain came through last night. Um, there's one in there, slightly worn, but it's called a brown, uh, bright line. I'll get this wrong way around now. Brown eye, bright line, brown eye, I think it's called. Blind, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Yeah, bright line, brown eye. So it's got a, it should have a white border to it down the bottom yeah, end. Yeah, you can just um, see a little trim. And then a sort of slightly orangey brown spot on the wing. Another rosy footman. Nothing else because it got wet, that one. I've got a question from uh, Alison Rag asking if it'd be possible to recommend a simple and cheap moth trap. Um, we do send a follow-up email so we can have a, a think yeah, perhaps. And... There are quite a few, but there are some good cheap ones about. Yeah. And we can give you a supplier's name as well. Um, is a, if you Google um, angry and lepidopterists, um, they, they will um, supply a great range of different ones. But also the NHBS do as well, Natural History Book Service, they do traps. Um, right, a strange one in there, I'm not quite sure what that one is, um, whether it will that one down in there. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. oh, sorry. My mind's gone blank on that one. I have to no, work we in can the book in a minute. Work on that one. The other one here is a, whoop, on that one there is called a beautiful hook tip. Oh. Because it has a hook tip to the wing. Yeah. Rather pretty. I think several moths have just landed in my hair. Oh. <laughs> occupational them. hazard um, hopefully these, it will come out at some point these little white ones are micros so you can see those oh yeah um, they are ermine moths they're called um, but there are quite a large number of species and I wouldn't like to say which from that which one they are um, there's one that goes on bird cherry they're usually related to particular food plants um, there's a spindle ermine which goes on spindle trees so they're not really uh, ideable easily all oh, right so on this side more mother of pearl but down here we've got a different group of moths this one here which is laying with its feet can you see oh, that this one which way is it that no one? you were fine the way you were yeah okay. that is astonishing That's right. rather amusing uh, so it's got its legs pushed forward <laughs> um Again, to just break up its outline, I suppose. It's quite hairy up front end. And it's got that sort of circular spot, large sort of uh, mark on the hind wing, on, sorry, on the forewing, at the, the basic tip of the forewing. Mm. Um, and that's called a pebble prominent. 
pebble prominent. And I think the pebble is supposed to be the circle, but with all the prominence, I don't know if you better get that, on the back where the wings meet at the top, yeah. there's always a tiny little tuft. I can see that. Um, you can see it, just that tuft. It's almost from profile, you, you yeah. see it. But, uh, so we're just looking sort of about at the, oh there. yeah, you've yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no, you got it. There's, there's actually two tufts. There's one further back, right, there, which okay. is the one you're referring to. So those, all the prominent moths have a little tuft like that, which is where the prominent bit comes from. Um, <laughs> I don't think that looks like a pebble myself, but there you go. Um, so and we're losing the one I was going to say. You have to see the one I was going to say. No, I haven't. I've lost my pot. Lost your pot lid. Right. Don't stand on the moths. No. no, we're avoiding them. Got him. I'll have a look at that one in a minute. Okay, next one. One or two got a bit wet in here, the trap you know, rain got in last night. Okay, now we saw an early thorn earlier. Um, which I pointed out. This one, which had its wings firmly shut. Um, yeah. We saw that one. Now this one, rather like a sort of butterfly, it, it has them half open. So it's not flat and it's not shut. It's sort of halfway yeah. house. Yeah. And on the underside, this is a rather warm one, but you can see on the underside, there's a sort of pinkish flush to the outer edge of the wing. Yeah, you can, can you, get that? you can just make that out. Yeah. Just here. Mm -hmm. And this is in a fresh condition, it would be darker than that. And it's a purple thorn. Because that, that line across the wing there, it's quite obviously pink, would be a darker purple. There we go. It also That's goes onto the front, front wing, but it's almost worn away on there. So it's not really showing, but that's a purple thorn. But odd, odd the way, again, it's trying to be a dead leaf, so it's... It's holding its wings in a broken mm. posture. Mm. Nut tree tussock, a slightly brighter one than we had earlier. Another lovely top. Chinese and character. another Chinese character. Absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah. And another nut tree tussock. Rosie Footman again. Uh, what else have we got in here? Uh, we've got two, woof, <laughs> two small magpies in here. Oh, I do like this. That one up there. And uh, you should get these if you've got a small garden. Um, with a few nettles and things in it, then you know if you've got a wild patch in a garden, you can easily disturb these in the daytime. They mm. they roost on the underside of nettle leaves, and you can just walk in and they um, fly. But they're micros, uh, but they're quite large for micros, quite quite large size. Um, and again, there's a common rustic with the big white sort of marks on down in there. Yeah. I think that's about it on that one. Um, this is the first of these we've had today. Not the most beautiful of moths, but it's called a heart and dart. Um, supposedly, the two black marks on the wing one is supposed to shape like a heart and one mm -hmm. like a dart yeah so the lower ones you can see is a so upside an upside down, down heart. heart yeah and the ones above is a dart. a dart yeah and there's a similar one called a heart and club um, where the dart shape is more rounded like a club mm. um, but if you're in any doubt with those two the heart and dart has a little black um line across its forehead the top of the head yeah. there, and that separates it i've often used that when they're a bit warm to separate them uh, there's another bright line brown i don't think it's any better than the last one in color no, it's a bit worn that one both a bit worn oh, i might need a pot for that because it's looking very active and we want to see it Susan says she'll send us a photo of the uh, the puss moth. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Susan. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, it'd be great to see that. Um, this one is going a bit wild, but it's another hawk moth. Oh, yeah. It's an elephant. Hang on, let's get the best best light. Can't um, see it that well. I could. Oh, that's all right. 
I mean, we could calm it down a bit if you want, and then. Well, we don't have to too do. long. We're no, running this okay. for only another ten minutes. All oh, right. Okay. No. Well, so that one is. We may. It may calm down in the pot, and then we could. Yeah, it's get quite them out. lovely. Yeah, but you can really appreciate the stunning pink. And, and it, um, it really illustrates the point we're just saying colors. that the Victorians, when they would have seen that, they would have seen the caterpillar. And the reason it's called the elephant hawk moth is that the, the caterpillar um, can enlarge its head to frighten birds. Um, and it, it waves its head around like a trunk. Wow. Like an elephant's trunk. And that's where that Look name comes from. Because you would never call that an elephant looking no, at it. No, no, you wouldn't. Moth. No, he wants to go, so we'll pop him in a, a little dark he spot. Might, yeah, he might dark there. spot down there, and then he'll just we'll settle down. Move on a bit fast, then, if we've got 10 minutes. Yeah. There's a lovely burnished brass. Oh, that's nice. You can really see the light on it. You can see the nice sheen. Brassy yeah. sheen. Another early thorn, the one that closes its wings tight. Yeah. And it's Dunbars and, and things we've had before, coronets, mother of pearl. Oh, we've got a beetle. There's a beetle in there. It's one of the uh, carrion beetles. They're often attracted to lights. You often do get things other than moths in the trap, hopefully not hornets. If you, if you get hornets in the trap, um, you're advised to stop trapping that year if you've got a nest nearby. Oh, right. Because they'll eat all the moths or they'll kill all the moths. Um, only if, if you've got one, it would be fine. But if you get start getting them every time you trap, it's advisable not We've to. We've got uh, a question from Andrew Prislak who asks, do most of these species range over the whole country? Yeah, some do, um, and others have a more southerly bias. It, it really just depends. But then there are northern moths that we don't get in the south. So um, that's, I would say most of the ones we're getting here would be at least up in the top of England, at least. Um, here we've got another new one. Oh, yes. A uh, strange shape, that one, and it's called the Drinker. The Drinker. And again, the Victorians would have named that from the larvae, which um, they assumed was picking up droplets of water from plants. Um, it's unlikely that it was drinking, but that's where the name came from. <laughs> it's an attractive little thing. It is. Yeah. And then down here, we've got a very stick-like one there. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like a, just a broken stick, isn't it? Which is called the flame, rather mysteriously, because there's not much about it. It looks like a flame. But in fresh condition, it does have a sort of... Um, a very pale wing when it flies, which might have looked like a flame. And that's about it for that one. I'm just trying to move through as we run out of time. No, no, it's fine, as long as we see uh, the highlights. I think uh, here oh, we've, got a... we've got a different thorn. We've had two sorts of thorn already, purple and early. Yeah. And this is a um, September thorn. I think. And another early thorn. And we've got a nice flash of, of pink on the underside. Da, da, da. Oh, well, there we go. We yes. don't need to worry about the other one. No, look at that. There's another elephant. Let's see if I can just. Things flying everywhere now. <laughs> Just such beautiful colours on the back, really intricate pattern. And, you know, this is something that you just can't fail to appreciate and enjoy. And uh, yeah, particularly the hawk moths, you know, kids just absolutely love them, don't they? So and if any you, of you... You can often handle them, you know. You, mm. you can they'll crawl up onto people's fingers and just sit there. Yeah, just um, very, very gently, because you can damage the wings. So yeah, just be yeah, very delicate, yeah. especially if you're doing this with young children, you know. Maybe just uh, hold it yourself. Yes. <laughs> or you can you can gently pop it onto the palm of their hand. Uh, but this is a great way to get you know children into into wildlife, isn't it? Just in your own back garden. What a stunning moth that is. 
yeah, you've got anything so on, the other, I think. on the other side mm, look at the underside yeah, of that yeah. moth there the color of it just incredible uh, right, another we'll peppered pop, moth there pop that down gently another peppered moth yeah and down in there you see that one is a scorched carpet oh blimey yes i might have with to change the, the angle white, yeah um, with this sort of small magpie here we go there. right so try and get this in focus there we go, scorched carpet. It's the one you're seeing on the far side. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think the fifth moth has just flown into my hair. Yeah, Clearly, it's a desirable habitat. This is rather nice. This is a, an oh. actual magpie. So we saw the small magpie. Yeah, yeah. But this I wonder is if we a, can get a small just to compare. This is the, the larger version. This is the macro version of it. Um, it was on this one, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. There we go. Right. So side by side. Does that work? Yeah. Oh, no, that's great. Oh, he's, no, no. he's feeling a bit lively. So we've got a small magpie here. Which is a micro moth. Micro moth and, and that is the magpie. Uh, magpie, which is rather nice. Yeah. We did not, have... not often. I don't see them very often. <clears throat> and there's another drinker. Yeah. This carton. Oh, there goes the magpie. Oh, this. <laughs> this one's got a bit wet, this um, carton. I would have, you don't know how heavy the rain was in the night. There's virtually, oh no, there is something on here. There's two things on here. There's that, which is a flame shoulder. Mm. Which again has a sort of pale band down the side, which when opened would look broader. And there we've got one of the swallow prominence. We had the per pebble prominent earlier. And this is a swallow prominent. So again, it has the tufts near the head. Um, quite nice. Yeah, yeah, very nice. How are we doing? We've uh, got three minutes. All right, so we'll just quickly do the last couple. Woo. Oh, a few coming out. Another poplar. Oh, look at that. Poplar hawk moth. Wow. What a stunner. Yep. What a stunner. Mm. Oh, just you just saw that beautiful flash, there. yeah. Um, I won't disturb him too much. Down in there is a different one we haven't had. It's a plain golden Y. Can you see that? Down yeah. So it's got a little Y mark on its wings. And it's slightly pink. It's a few quite it. make the Y out, but... No, it's sort of it's an upside down Y. An upside down Y. This is the one we're we're looking at, folks. This one here. Okay. Not much on the other side, so I'll leave that. So I've got quite a good stack. Yeah. Nice. The other one, the wing again, which we had earlier. Oh, look at this beautiful peach blossom. Oh wow! Look at that. Now I don't very often see that. Get the, it's not in the mint condition, angles. otherwise those spots would be rose pink. Oh, they're not far they're off. Not they're, they're sort of peachy, aren't they? So that's a peach blossom. Beautiful moth. I think I've only seen that a couple of times before. Really? Oh, that must be. Must be a rare one. Mm, I've had a lovely there. message from Nicola Tipler saying, what a fantastic moth show. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome, Nicola. Thanks for joining. Nothing much on that one, so I'll leave that one. Ooh. Yeah, don't worry, Alan. We'll include the title of the book in the uh, the list of moths when I send that in a in a follow up email. Different one there, double square spot. Yeah, that's easy to see why. Not a wet, wet uh, thing there. Yeah. And I think loads of footmen going. Don't worry about that. There is another species of footman there, dingy footman. That one slightly broader. And I've got two yep. boxes left. I hold on and to that. There's another one there, sort of dingy footman again. Oh, another one here, nice one, buff arches. Oh, that's a nice one, isn't it? It's yeah. not in the best condition, that one, but. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, trying to get it to, to focus a little better. One people. more tray and then we're done. 
One more tree, okay. And it's got a new species in it. <laughs> well, you one. never know what you're going to get, right? I'll Can you get them? I'll stop with the buffarches. We've got a new species. This uh, moth stack is <laughs> at the leading tower of Pisa here. Yeah. Right. So we've got a new species, have we? Yeah, sorry, th this one on here. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Little one. It's, it's, it's actually a macro. It's called a Kent Black Arches. Kent as in the county. Yeah. Presumably that's where it was first. And it is spreading. It, again, it's something good. I wouldn't have got a few years ago. Oh, right. Uh, it's become more common. And inside here, um, there's one of the notorious box moths. But I don't think he's going to know. It's gone. He's <laughs> gone. He's, he's yeah, over the there. Tree moth. He's just gone into, oh no, gone onto the roof. He's settled on the roof. And that's it. Uh, there's a few in the bottom, but nothing we haven't seen already. And we're getting a couple of drops of rain again. We might just have done this all in perfect timing. Now, folks, these, um, these moth traps are a traditional part of our open days which we did virtually all of last year, uh, online by that, I mean virtually. Oh, what we've got here. So that's a brown tail moth. Brown tail moth. I think, moth. Uh, is it yellow tail? Yellow tail, sorry. Moth, yellow tail, <laughs> with some flash tail. of it, yeah. Um, so we did these moth traps, uh, Dave and I, I did recordings of them last year, um, but we're now doing them in person again, aren't we, Dave? So, yeah. you know, you can come and join us here at uh, our Mingle Down Barn offices in yes, in hampshire our next one is on august. friday 6th of august yeah uh, so you can enjoy looking at some some moths over a bacon sandwich and a croissant uh, you can just see our website for further details or just give us a ring and uh, we'll send a full list of of our moth species that we've seen another today chinese character to finish another with. chinese character <laughs> wow look at that just i you really do just mistake that for bird dropping don't you <laughs> incredible and thank you all so much for your, we'll your lovely comments. We've got, we've got lots of people messaging us saying how uh, nice message from Caroline Gray. It's been really interesting. Great array of species. Jill Peachy, thank you. What a lovely way to start the day. Thank you all so much for your comments. Um, well, yeah. And you're all, you're all very welcome. I'll um, turn around here. I've now got to go and take <laughs> a lot of moss out of my hair. I think I was Oh, quite quite I optimistic, him, so. quite optimistic with my sunglasses, but <laughs> I think I need to go and shake my head over a bush somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so, get some more. Brilliant. So it's a good haul there. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and a good variety there. So uh, totally yeah, enjoyed that. Yeah, great. Thank you all so much for joining us. And yeah, we might do might be able to do another one sometime. But yeah. if you want to, you know, come to one in person, then just keep an eye out on our website, and you'll see when we've got. The ones that are running here at the office mm -hmm. so until the next time folks uh, we'll see you, see you later and take care and we'll send a follow-up email later bye, bye folks <laughs>